Want to speak real Norwegian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at NorwegianClass101.com. Immersion is often hailed as the most efficient and effective way to learn a foreign language. In many ways, it's true. With all the language learning methods out there, nothing else comes close to having to think and interact with your environment in the language you're learning. Unfortunately, though, most language learners wrongly assume that the only way to experience language immersion is to pack up and move to a foreign country. But not everyone can afford to spend a summer abroad just to learn a foreign language. Luckily, there are other ways to immerse yourself. These methods are less obvious, but they are effective. In this video, we'll take a look at five steps you can take for the ultimate language immersion experience at home. Number one, transform your digital world into your target language. Technology is an indispensable part of modern life. We interact with phones, computers, tablets, and other electronic devices throughout the day. Why not take these interactions and use them to practice your target language? Most devices give you the option of switching the language of the operating system. Switching your phone or laptop interface to your target language won't make you fluent, but it will help you engage with the language in a very practical way multiple times every day. Another way to transform your digital life is to check which sites you use on a daily basis and use them in your target language also. A great example of this is switching your version of Google. Using Google in your target language will allow you to search for things in that language and you're more likely to get results in that language as well. So if you're looking for a popular band, a show, or food, something that's usually written in your target language, it will actually be easier to find information about it if you switch your version of Google. Of course, you can also change popular social networks like Facebook or Twitter. You can even go to news sites for your fill of global news. Do you like podcasts? Try listening to a couple popular podcasts in your target language. Number two, write out a speech or conversation in your target language. A surefire way to increase your ability in a foreign language is to write out a mock conversation or speech in that language. Pretend you have to give a speech on one of your favorite topics. It could be anything from sports, hobbies, or even your favorite movie genre. Now, take some time to write out your fictitious speech. Inevitably, you will hit some roadblocks, but when you get stuck, research the words or grammar points you don't know. This is a highly effective and practical way to increase your vocabulary, and it'll help you practice thinking in a different language. Writing a long, connected train of thoughts exposes the gaps and weaknesses in your language studying. Once you know what these are, you're free to practice them and use them to continue on with your speech. This is also a great way to learn new words in the context of your entire speech. Context is king when you're learning a language. Learning words in the context of other words and sentences helps you surmise what new words mean. It also helps you get comfortable with how these words are practically used. Not to mention, context helps you to remember and recall new information more easily. Number three, practice with native speakers. There are a lot of great learning resources out there for anyone learning a new language. However, nothing quite comes close to practicing the language with a real person. If you live in or around a large metropolitan area, there's a chance that there are some native speakers nearby. Check and see if your area has any local language exchanges or language speaking groups. You're likely to find a native speaker there. If you can't make a connection locally, you can search online. Just as there are language exchanges in the real world, there are also online ones, most of which are free. Number four, connect with other language learners. Native speakers aren't the only people who can aid you on your language learning journey. Practicing with other learners is also helpful. Don't worry if you practice with someone who has a higher or lower level in the language than you. If you're the more advanced learner, you can learn a lot by teaching someone else. As you help someone else understand difficult words or grammatical concepts, you'll find that you start to better understand them yourself. If your learning partner has a higher level, they can be the one to help you overcome the hurdles you encounter as a beginner. After all, what better way to learn than from someone who, as a language learner, has been in your shoes? Number five, reward yourself in your target language. At the end of a busy day, we all love a little relaxation and me time. One of the most enjoyable and effective ways to develop your language skills is to kick back and enjoy the language while doing leisure activities. Whether it's listening to music, watching a movie or TV show, reading a book, or even enjoying a good online video binge, 
Even spending just an extra 30 minutes a day doing something you love in your target language can yield some serious long-term results. If you're a beginner, start with more basic content. You might have to start out listening to simple songs or even watching children's shows. After a while, though, you'll be able to dive into the meatier stuff and more engaging stuff as your proficiency increases. Learning a foreign language doesn't mean you have to spend your days straining over grammar rules or textbooks. Any way that you can take your learning off the page and make it more enjoyable will help you learn faster. Immersion is a powerful way to learn a foreign language. And now, more than ever, the immersion experience isn't limited to just world travelers. With a little creativity and the right resources, you can experience the language without ever having to leave your hometown. Many of these resources can be found with our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to immerse yourself in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speak real Norwegian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at NorwegianClass101.com. Great. Okay. Great. Okay. Actually, you can just say okay as well, as it's very commonly used in Norwegian too. Unnskyld mig. Excuse me. Unnskyld mig. Excuse me. Unnskyld is a very useful phrase. Uh, when you want to say sorry, you can also say unnskyld. Jeg beklager. I'm sorry. Jeg beklager. I'm sorry. Or you can say unnskyld. Hva er klokka? What time is it? Hva er klokka? What time is it? Uh, actually, hva er klokka literally means what is the clock? Kan jeg få regningen, er du snill? Could I get the check, please? Kan jeg få regningen, er du snill? Could I get the check, please? Unfortunately, those bills aren't going to pay themselves, you know. Vent et øyeblikk. Wait a moment. Vent et øyeblikk. Wait a moment. Øyeblikk actually means I blink. So wait just a blink of an eye. See. To say. See. To say. Jeg sier alltid min mening. I always say my opinion. Yeah, that's important too. Forklare. To explain. Forklare. To explain. Kan du forklare dette for meg? Can you explain this to me? Actually, a lot of Norwegian words start with uh, for, something, something. In this case, forklare means to forclare, so it's like making things clear. Or explain. Høre, to hear. Høre, to hear. Jeg hører deg. I hear you. Gå, to go. Gå, to go. Jeg går fra stasjonen nå. I go from the station now. Vite, to know. Vite. To know. Du vet så mye. You know so much. Kaffe. Coffee. Kaffe. Coffee. Kan jeg få en vanlig svart kaffe, takk? Can I have a normal black coffee, please? Norwegians love coffee, so if you go to Norway, you'll probably end up drinking, drinking a lot of coffee. Yeah, any coffee. Takk. Thanks. Takk. Thanks. You can also say tusen takk, which literally means thousand thanks. So many thanks. Svimmel. Dissi. Svimmel. Dissi. Det er ubehagelig å være svimmel. It is uncomfortable being dizzy. Ah, the heat is making me so dizzy. Vakker. Beautiful. Vakker. Beautiful. Du er vakker. You are beautiful. Or you can say du er pen. But if you say du er pen, make sure to make the e long or else it'll sound like uh, you are a pen. 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 Pen is beautiful. Pen is pen. Gla. Happy. Gla. Happy. Han ser veldig glad ut i dag. 
He looks really happy today. Hvordan går det med deg? How are you? Hvordan går det med deg? How are you? Jeg har det bra. I'm good. Hvor er du fra? Where are you from? Hvor er du fra? Where are you from? Jeg er fra Oslo. I'm from Oslo. Når er bursdagen din? When is your birthday? Når er bursdagen din? When is your birthday? Bursdagen min er 20. januar. My birthday is the 20th of January. Actually, my birthday is in December, so December. Hvor bor du? Where do you live? Hvor bor du? Where do you live? Jeg bor i Bergen. I live in Bergen. Bergen is a nice city. If you live there, you're lucky. Hvor jobber du? Where do you work? Hvor jobber du? Where do you work? Jeg jobber i kommunen. I work at the municipality. Kjøtt. Meat. Kjøtt. Meat. Jeg spiser ikke kjøtt. I don't eat meat. Well, you know, everybody say that it's good for the environment uh, not to eat meat. Um, and I wish I had enough willpower to become a vegetarian, but not yet. Maybe in the future. Who knows? Nishari. Curious. Nishari. Curious. Hunden er veldig nysgjerrig på hva katten gjør. The dog is very curious about what the cat is doing. I used to have a dog, and my dog didn't care about cats at all. I think cats and dogs are usually not really good friends, uh, but sometimes uh, they just ignore each other, I guess. Øl. Beer. Øl. Beer. En kald øl er veldig passende i sommerværet. A cold beer suits the summer weather well. So I think some of you might have problems pronouncing ø. Uh, it kind of sounds like somebody hits you in the stomach. You go like uh. Yeah, if you get hit in the stomach, maybe you would want to have a cold beer afterwards to cool off. Recently, you know, it's getting so popular with microbreweries. I think they have a lot of good beer, uh, like the, all the locally produced beers especially. I like to try different types of beer when I go for uh, trips and so on. Smør. Butter. Smør. Butter. Kan du smøre smør på brødskiven? Can you put butter on the slice of bread? In Norway, uh, we usually have a lot of bread, brød, for breakfast, and then we usually would have smør as one of the common things to put on the bread, along with other, um, what we call pålegg, which is uh, literally put on. So it's anything you put on the bread is called pålegg. Rådyr. 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 Det er vanlig å se rådyr om vinteren. It is common to see rådyr in the winter. Det var en gang en rådyr som ble skutt, og så ble den rådyr. So the word rådyr can have two meanings in Norwegian. The first one, as you just heard, is rådyr, and the other meaning is crazily expensive. Uh, so the example sentence I just gave you means um, there was a roe deer that got uh, shot and got e crazily expensive. Bro, bridge. Bro, bridge. Den broen var veldig flott. That bridge was very nice. So, as you probably understood, this is about bro, bridge, not as in bro, yo bro. Har du lagt på deg i det siste? Have you gained weight recently? Har du lagt på deg i det siste? Have you gained weight recently? Well, this one should be pretty obvious. We actually have a song about this topic in Norwegian. You should check it out. It goes like this. 
Nej så sjukt du har blivit. Nu har du pina det lagt på dig litt. Har du det bra? Och sen står det till. Det var länge sedan sist. Um, this song is by Ole Ivars, so please check them out for some fun Norwegian songs. Du har ett grått hår. You have a grey hair. Du har ett grått hår. You have a grey hair. Yeah, you know, when people start getting closer to their 30s, then there might be some grey hairs. It's a hard topic to talk about. Det var det jag sa. I told you so. Det var det jag sa. I told you so. Yeah, this reminds me of my childhood, like playing around and arguing with my brother. It's like, det var det jag sa. Du har sparken. You're fired. Du har sparken. You're fired. Luckily, this is something I haven't experienced yet, but that's definitely something I wouldn't want to hear. Det er ikke deg, det er meg. It's not you, it's me. Det er ikke deg, det er meg. It is not you, it's me. I think this sentence is a little bit of a cliche, perhaps. But truth to be told, you know, nowadays, uh, some people even break up through SMS. So, who knows? Dessert. 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 Har du plass til dessert? Har du plass til dessert? Do you have room for dessert? In Norwegian we have an expression, uh, dessert mage, which literally means the dessert stomach. Or in other words, there's always room for dessert. In Norway, people really like uh, chocolate cake, chocolate cake. There are also a lot of different types of traditional Norwegian desserts, like krumkake or marengs. Um, yeah, you should look it up if you want to have some good sweets while you're in Norway. Kok, kok, chef. Kok, chef. Jeg er en kok. Jeg er kokken. I'm the chef. Hurtig mat. Hurtig mat. Fast food. Hurtig mat. Fast food. Hurtig mat er ikke så bra for kroppen. Hurtig mat er ikke så bra for kroppen. Fast food isn't good for the body. Norwegians uh, actually love hurtig mat. Um, one of the most popular uh, types of food you can buy in the stores is, for instance, a pizza called grandiosa. Grandiosa, which is a very boring pizza with almost nothing on it. Restaurant. 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 Denne restauranten liker jeg. Denne restauranten liker jeg. I like this restaurant. In Norway, it's not that cheap to dine out, so a lot of Norwegians just make their food at home. Regning. Regning. Bill. Regningen. Bill. Kan vi få regningen? Er du snill? Kan vi få regningen? Er du snill? Can we have the bill, please? Det var en flott kveld. Det var en flott kveld. That was a great evening. Det var en flott kveld. That was a great evening. Uh, this is also a phrase you can use very easily with friends or, yeah, anybody you had a good time with. Jeg ringer deg. Jeg ringer deg. 
I'll call you. Jeg ringer dig. I'll call you. Well, in some cases, if it hadn't been such a great evening, this might be an excuse to never talk again. So just be aware of that. If the night was uh, successful, I think most people would probably ask uh, when they would be able to meet again. Like, oh, this has been a really nice evening. Do you want to hang out again next week or something? But I'll call you. Um, maybe he won't. Jeg kan kjøre deg hjem. Jeg kan kjøre deg hjem. I'll drive you home. Jeg kan kjøre deg hjem. I'll drive you home. In Norway, taxis are quite expensive, so if you found somebody who is willing to drive you home, then you're lucky. Um, if it's a good person, of course. Når skal vi møtes i morgen? Når skal vi møtes i morgen? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Når skal vi møtes i morgen? What time shall we meet tomorrow? As you might know, uh, Norway has very short work hours. So even during the weekdays, it is easy to meet up after work. And since it's uh, during the summer, it's usually light outside until very late. So uh, you might want to go out in the nature, maybe do some barbecue or something. Anything is possible. Kan vi møtes igen? Kan vi møtes igen? Can I see you again? Kan vi møtes igen? Can I see you again? Well, if somebody asks you this question, then you've probably made a good impression. Good job. Jeg kommer til å telle til tre. Jeg kommer til å telle til tre. I'm gonna count to three. Jeg kommer til å telle til tre. I'm gonna count to three. Well, you know you've probably done something not too good if uh, your parents use this phrase with you, so be careful. Stop. 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 So me and my brother would sometimes get into fights and I would have to tell him to stop or lugge, which means stop pulling my hair. Hva sa du? Hva sa du? What did you say? Hva sa du? What did you say? Well, this is a very versatile phrase. I mean, you can use it every time somebody says something and you couldn't hear it properly. It's like, hva sa du? Uh, but then again, a lot of Norwegians just say, ha? Jeg tuller ikke. Jeg tuller ikke. I'm not kidding. Jeg tuller ikke. I'm not kidding. Tuller du? Are you kidding? Jeg tuller ikke. I'm not kidding. Slå av TV-en nå. Slå av TV-en nå. Turn the TV off now. Slå av TV-en nå. Turn off the TV now. Well, I'm sure this is a phrase all of us have heard some point in life. Uh, it's so tempting just to sit in and watch Netflix or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's not always too tempting to turn the TV off and go out. Lillehammer. Lillehammer Olympic Arena. Man kan stå på ski i Lillehammer. Man kan stå på ski i Lillehammer. One can ski in the Lillehammer Olympic Arena. If you visit Lillehammer, which is the name of a Norwegian city, you can also check out Hunderfossen. Uh, it's a family park 
with some huge troll statues and a lot of fun for the kids. Prekestolen. The Pulpit's Rock. Prekestolen er på toppen av et fjell. Prekestolen er på toppen av et fjell. The Pulpit's Rock is on the top of a mountain. Actually, this is one of the most beautiful places Norway has to offer. Uh, Tom Cruise visited uh, the Pulpit's Rock just last year for his new Mission Impossible 6 movie. So if you want to see what it looks like, you should check that out. Vigelandsparken. Vigeland Park. I Vigelandsparken er det mange statuer. I Vigelandsparken. Er det mange statuer. In the Vigeland Park, there are a lot of statues. The most famous statue in uh, Vigelandsparken is called uh, Sinnataggen, uh, which is just translated to an angry boy. So it's basically just a really angry boy uh, standing there. If you have time, please go ahead and see it for yourself. Nidarostomen. Nidaros Cathedral. Nidarosdomen ligger nord i landet. Nidarosdomen ligger nord i landet. The Nidaros Cathedral is located north of the country. Uh, Nidarosdomen is located in Trondheim, the third biggest city in Norway. Nidarosdomen is the burial place of an ancient Norwegian king, and it is also the northernmost uh, medieval cathedral in the world, so it might be interesting to check out if you're in Trondheim. Vikingmuseet, the Viking Ship Museum. Vikingmuseet har mange vikingskip. Vikingmuseet har mange vikingskip. The Viking Ship Museum has many Viking ships on display. This is also a typical place to visit for school kids. And my class also went to the Viking Museum once uh, to see, uh, you know, to learn more about the Norwegian Viking heritage. If you find yourself visiting Oslo, this is uh, probably one of the places you wouldn't want to miss out on. Undersøke kostnadene. To research the costs. Jeg skal undersøke kostnadene først. Jeg skal undersøke kostnadene først. I'll research the costs first. Yeah, it might be a good idea to do some research about the costs before going to Norway, or you might get yourself a shock. Bestille overnatting. To book accommodations. Skal vi bestille overnatting sammen? Skal vi bestille overnatting sammen? Shall we book accommodations together? If you're going to Norway and you want to experience uh, something spectacular when it comes to accommodation, you might want to visit the north of Norway, where you can try to sleep in a snow hotel, for instance. Um, yeah, there are many interesting alternatives out there. Få et internasjonalt førekort. To obtain an international driving license. Du må søke om et internasjonalt førekort før du drar. Du må søke om et internasjonalt førekort før du drar. You have to obtain an international driving license before you leave. Well, it will definitely be easier to get around in Norway if you have an international driving license. Uh, but there are trains and buses available as well for the major tourist uh, destinations. So don't despair if you cannot get one. Pakke. To pack. Jeg er ferdigpakket. Jeg er ferdig pakket. I'm finished packing. 
Since Norway is located in the north, um, you might want to bring some warm clothes just in case, even during the summer. But on the other hand, you might get surprised that uh, it's quite uh, hot in Norway during the summer as well, so you might not need it. But then on the other hand, if you're unlucky with the weather, you'll definitely regret not having brought warm clothes. Köpe reiseforsikring to buy travel insurance. Det är viktigt att köpa reiseforsikring. Det är viktigt att köpa reiseforsikring. It is important to buy travel insurance. Well, yeah, I actually experienced uh, getting into an accident surfing in Bali many years ago. And if I didn't have a travel insurance back then, it would have cost me a fortune. So whatever you do, please don't forget to buy your travel insurance. Gå till dyreparken. Gå till dyreparken. To go to the zoo. Gå till dyreparken. To go to the zoo. Kan vi gå till dyreparken nästa söndag? Kan vi gå till dyreparken? Neste Sunday. Can we go to the zoo next Sunday? Again, Norway is a small country, so there's not that many options if you want to see the zoo. Uh, but there is one down in Kristiansand, uh, which is probably where would you would like to go if you want to see animals for a while in Norway. Go på picnic. Go på picnic. To have a picnic. Gå på picnic. To have a picnic. La oss ha en picnic. La oss ha en picnic. Let's have a picnic. It is very nice to be outside uh, in Norway during the summer when it's nice and hot and have a picnic with your friends. Um, so yeah, if you have the chance, definitely go for a picnic. Spise middag og se en film. Spise middag og se en film. To have a dinner and see a movie. Spise middag og se en film. To have dinner and see a movie. Vil du spise middag og se en film? Vil du spise middag og se en film? Do you want to have a dinner and watch a movie? This is a great idea for a date. You can never go wrong with a movie and dinner, unless it's a horrible movie. Ta en fergetur. Ta en fergetur. To take a ferry ride. Ta en fergetur. To take a ferry ride. Jeg vet om en veldig koselig fergetur langs fjorden. Jeg vet om en veldig koselig fergetur langs fjorden. I know of a very nice ferry ride along the fjord. And if you want to see the fjords, uh, there's a trip called Norway in a nutshell, which is a very nice ferry ride uh, along the fjords. Gå på stranden. Gå på stranden. To walk on the beach. Gå på stranden. To walk on the beach. Vill du gå på stranden? Vill du gå på stranden? Do you want to walk on the beach? Norway has mostly rocky beaches, but there are some good sandy beaches out there as well. So... Yeah, you can still get a nice walk on the beach if you visit Norway. Want to speak real Norwegian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at NorwegianClass101.com. Bærbar datamaskin. Laptop. Bærbar datamaskin. Laptop. Jeg skal kjøpe meg en ny bærbar datamaskin. I am going to buy a new laptop. So the word bærbar actually means carryable. Parfume. Perfume. Parfume. Perfume. Denne parfymen lukter veldig godt. This perfume smells really good. Bok. Book. Bok. 
bok. Jag önskar mig en ny bok till jul. I wish for a new book for Christmas. Världens kart. World map. Världens kart. World map. Världens kart täcker hela den ena väggen på rummet mitt. The world map covers one entire wall in my room. Kamera. Camera. Kamera. Camera. Jag önskar mig ett kamera till bursdagen min. I want a camera for my birthday. Ryggsäck. Backpack. Ryggsäck. Backpack. Pappa, kan jag få en ny ryggsäck till skolestart? Dad, can I have a new backpack for the start of school? Var så snill, please. Klassekamerat. Classmate. Klassekamerat. Classmate. Jag liker många av de nya klassekamraterna mina. I like many of my new classmates. Läxor. Homework. Läxor. Homework. Jag har gjort färdig läxorna mina för dagen. I have finished my homework for the day. Examen. Exam. Examen. Exam. Jag har examen om tre uker. I have exams in three weeks. Oh no, no time to read. Sommerferie. Summer break. Sommerferie. Summer break. Sommerferien är över. Summer break is over. My favorite part of the year and it's over. Jag ska läsa färdig en norsk bok vid att läsa 10 sidor om dagen. I'll finish reading one Norwegian book by reading 10 pages a day. Jag ska läsa färdig en norsk bok vid att läsa 10 sidor om dagen. I'll finish reading one Norwegian book by reading 10 pages a day. It's really hard uh, reading a book in a new foreign language when you have to check the dictionary all the time, but keep it up, you can do it. Jag ska bestå norsk testen min. I'll pass my Norwegian test. Jag ska bestå norsk testen min. I'll pass my Norwegian test. You know how there's always so many things you don't know about your own language until somebody asks you, like, why do you use this word in this context? And you're like, mm, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense. Just remember it. <laughs> Jeg vil forstå en norsk film helt ved å se den hver dag. I'll fully understand one Norwegian movie by watching it every day. Jag vill förstå en norsk film helt ved å se den hver dag. I'll fully understand one Norwegian movie by watching it every day. I don't think I would have the patience to watch the same movie every single day. But if that's the way you learn, then you gotta do what you gotta do. So maybe some of you already know the Norwegian drama Scum? Shame? Well, instead of watching the same movie every single day, you could watch the whole drama. Jag ska ge en tre minuters inledande tale på norsk till mina norska vänner. I'll give a three minutes introductory speech in Norwegian to my Norwegian friends. Jag ska ge en tre minuters inledande tale på norsk till mina norska vänner. I'll give a three minutes introductory speech in Norwegian to my Norwegian friends. It's always good having friends who can help you learn, so make some Norwegian friends and practice. Jag ska lära fem norska sanger utnatt. I'll memorize five Norwegian songs. Jag ska lära fem norska sanger utnatt. I'll memorize five Norwegian songs. Yeah, you should check out DDE uh, or DDE. Uh, they have some really fun Norwegian songs that everybody knows and that everybody like to sing along to. So that's the way to go if you want to be good at Norwegian songs. Slappe av på stranden. Relax at the beach. Slappe av på stranden. Relax at the beach. Han gör inte annat än att slappa av på stranden när han är på ferie. He doesn't do anything but relax on the beach when he's on holiday. Lär norsk med NorwegianClass101.com Learn Norwegian with NorwegianClass101.com Lär norsk med NorwegianClass101.com Learn Norwegian with uh, NorwegianClass101.com Don't forget to study! You can bring your book to the beach. Lära och lage norsk mat. To learn to cook Norwegian food. 
lære å lage norsk mat. To learn to cook Norwegian food. Dette er et kokkekurs for å lære å lage norsk mat. This is a cooking course to learn to cook Norwegian food. Norwegian fish is really delicious. You should try some salmon or some mackerel. Ha en grillfest. To have a barbecue. Ha en grillfest. To have a barbecue. Jeg skal ha en grillfest hjemme hos meg i morgen. I am having a barbecue at my place tomorrow. In Norway it's very expensive to dine out, so a lot of people would uh, have grillfests uh, at their home. So if you make any Norwegian friends, uh, make sure you get the chance to go to a grillfest. Feste hele natten. To party all night. Feste hele natten. To party all night. I dag skal vi feste hele natta. Today we will be partying all night. Party, party. <laughs> Genser. Sweater. Genser. Sweater. Denne genseren arvet jeg fra en venn. This sweater I inherited from a friend. Regnete. Rainy. Regnete. Rainy. Det var en regnete dag. It was a rainy day. Vindfullt. Windy. Vindfullt. Windy. I dag er det vindfullt, så ta på deg en varm jakke. Today it is windy, so put on a warm jacket. Halloween. 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 Halloween er kjempegøy for barna. Halloween is great fun for the kids. Høst. Autumn. Høst. Autumn. Det er typisk høstvær i dag. It is typical autumn weather today. Solbriller. Sunglasses. Solbriller. Sunglasses. Jeg glemte solbrillene mine på toalettet. I forgot my sunglasses in the toilet. Strand. Beach. Strand. Beach. På sommeren elsker jeg å ligge på stranda og sole meg. In the summer I love lying on the beach and tan. Svømming. Swimming. Svømming. Swimming. Min sønn synes svømming er veldig gøy. My son thinks swimming is a lot of fun. Who doesn't love to swim? Sol. Sun. Sol. Sun. I dag skinner sola. Today the sun is shining. Palmetre. Palm tree. Palmetre. Palm tree. I Spania finnes det mange palmetre siden det er varmt. In Spain, there are a lot of palm trees as it is warm. Want to speak real Norwegian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at NorwegianClass101.com. Want to finally learn Norwegian the fast, fun, and easy way? In this video, I'll show you the top 10 ways to get started. So let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. Access any audio or video lesson on NorwegianClass101.com and just press the play button to get started. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. We have thousands of audio and video lessons covering a variety of topics like grammar, pronunciation, listening, and reading. Just click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, read along with the lesson. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript. These come with every lesson. The lesson notes provide you with the dialogue for the scene taught in the lesson, along with translations, a more in-depth explanation of the grammar and culture, and even vocab and sample sentences. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear in the lesson. And the dialogue study tool provides you with the audio for the lesson dialogue, along with the translations. Number three, shadowing. Shadowing is a tested learning technique where you repeat what you hear. This is a great way to start speaking in minutes and practice speaking in general. If you're listening along with the lesson audio or dialogue, be sure to shadow along the way. Number four, use the dialogue study tool to master the conversation. Here, you get the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation demonstrated in the lesson. Listen and repeat until you've mastered each line. Do this until you've mastered the entire conversation. Number five, Use the voice recorder to perfect your pronunciation and speaking. In the dialogue study tool, you'll find a microphone icon next to each line. Click on it to record your voice. Then, compare it with the native speakers. 
listen and adjust your pronunciation until you match that of the native speaker. Number six, review vocab with the lesson vocabulary list. Vocabulary words are the building blocks of language. You can save vocab words taught in each lesson by clicking on Add to Word Bank. Want to drill the words with smart flashcards instead? Just click on Add to Flashcard Deck to do so. Number seven, listen to the review track. If you've studied an audio lesson before, just listen to the review track so that you don't have to listen through the entire lesson again. This is a great way to reinforce the material that you've learned and it's great to have on the go. Just access any audio lesson and click on the download icon. Then click review to download the review track. Number eight, review with quizzes after the lesson. Once you're confident enough with the material taught in the lesson, be sure to take the quiz to test your newfound knowledge. Take the review questions and answer true or false for each one. Or take the writing questions and input your answer. Remember to check the answers by clicking on the check answers button. Number nine, participate and leave a comment. The best way to master what you've learned is to use it. Join the community of learners by leaving a comment below at the end of every lesson. Our dedicated teachers will check your responses to correct you on any mistakes or provide you with helpful study tips and advice. And finally, number 10, move on to the next lesson. Done with a lesson? Mark the lesson as complete. You can see your overall learning progress on your dashboard. If you particularly enjoyed the lesson, mark the lesson as favorite so that you can come back to it later at any time. Click on the forward arrow to move on to the next lesson and continue learning. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn Norwegian, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. Remember, you can sign up to NorwegianClass101.com by clicking on the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds, and it's free. I'll see you next time. Bye. You probably already have language learning goals, but the real key to success is to make the right goals. In this video, I'll show you how, with five tips to stop wasting your time and start learning. Hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video, I'll teach you five tips to stop procrastinating and keep your motivation for learning a new language. Some of these are study methods, and some will be general ways that you can keep your study motivation up. While these tips are for studying a language, some of them are good for other things in your life too, such as new challenges or other types of goals. But before we start, don't forget to click the link in the description to get your bundle of PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, romantic lines, learning tips, absolutely free. Now, you probably already have some goals you're trying to achieve when it comes to your language learning progress. While achieving these goals is important, making sure you make the right goals is the real key to success. The very first tip is to set SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, meaning each letter in the word stands for another word. The earliest known reference to SMART goals was in an article written by George T. Doran for a 1981 issue of the Management Review Academic Journal. The acronym varies depending on its use, but each letter generally stands for some criterion that helps with effective goal setting. For our purposes, let's define SMART goals as follows. The S stands for specific. Your goals should target a specific area for improvement. Our natural tendency is to have a goal that's very general. If your goal isn't specific enough, you'll lack the focus and proper direction you need to achieve your goals. So S is for specific. M stands for measurable. Your goals should be quantifiable. They should be able to indicate progress in some way. You have to be able to track your progress, otherwise you won't know if you're getting any closer to your goal. As you see yourself getting closer and closer to your goal, your motivation will go up. So your goals need to be measurable. A stands for achievable. Your goals have to be achievable. Many people want to become fluent in their target language immediately. However, this goal is unrealistic. Your goals have to be achievable. If your goal is too challenging for your current level, it will only demotivate you when you aren't where you think you should be. Instead, think about what results can realistically be achieved given your level, your resources, and any constraints, such as time. 
So make sure that your goal is actually achievable. R stands for relevant. Your goals may be specific, they may be measurable, and they may be achievable, but are they actually relevant to what you want to achieve? Don't just do a lot of things. If you're focused on improving your speaking skills in your target language, make sure that you spend your time having conversations with others. Make sure you're doing the right things so that your efforts actually bring you closer to your goal instead of just giving you more work. T stands for timely. You need to set a deadline for your goals. If you don't specify when you plan to achieve the result you've set for yourself, it's very easy to put off the task. You can delay it until tomorrow, the next week, or the next month, and at this rate, you'll never get things done. So your goal must have an end date. So remember, tip number one is to set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So for example, a goal you could make is registering for a challenging test, a test that's a little bit beyond your current level. I hate failing, so if I register for a challenging test, I'm motivated to study because I don't want to fail. This is a good example of a SMART goal because tests are specific. There are tons of different tests focused on speaking, grammar, and comprehension. Pick a test that can measure the specific area in which you'd like to grow. Measurable. Tests are measurable. Every test measures your performance to some degree. Whether it's a total count of right and wrong answers or a simple pass or fail, every test measures your performance. Tests are achievable. There's an important detail to remember here though. Find a test that is achievable for you. If you're a beginner, then the most advanced test is probably not right for you. Find one that's meant for beginners. Then after that one, work your way up to more advanced tests in the future. Tests are relevant. Most, if not all, language tests are designed to ensure that you're capable of performing to a set standard in your target language. Lower level tests are designed to ensure that you can handle the most essential aspects of your target language. But there are tests for all levels, including higher education entry exams that could be difficult, even for native speakers. Pick the one that's right for you. And finally, tests are timely. If your test is completed in a physical location, then this one is obvious. You have to be at that spot at the set time, ready to take the test. There's no wiggle room. But even online tests will most likely have a deadline for you to complete them. The second tip to help you stop procrastinating and to keep your motivation up is to create a diary or social media account that you can update every day. This may seem simple or even unrelated to language learning, but by creating a diary in your target language, you have the chance to actually create in the language itself. Creating a diary is also a great way to practice writing in your target language. Another method is to create a social media account, which gives you the chance to connect with other people who are working toward the same goals as you. Maybe they can even give you feedback on your writing. If you're following people online who regularly share good resources, those can be really helpful for you too. It lets you find new tools that can encourage and motivate you, especially if they relate to some of your other interests, such as music or books in other languages. This is a really good way to take a few minutes every day to work towards your goal, without it even seeming like work. The third tip is to focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Try to watch a movie in your target language without any subtitles, or try to understand your favorite TV show that's in your target language. If you don't already have a goal like this, it can be a fun way to practice. If your friends often talk about a particular TV show, it could be a good way to study and a fun way to keep your motivation up together. Plus, TV shows and movies often use the language in a way that's vastly different from the conversations provided in traditional textbooks. So you often get to hear different vocabulary choices. It's a very powerful way to learn a language and end up sounding more like a native speaker. Tip number four is to enroll in a regular language course. Register for something you have to go to or you have to participate in regularly, meaning every week or two times a week or maybe even every day. The point of this is it's something that gives you a pattern to follow. Forming a study habit will help you progress very quickly. It will make it easier for you to achieve your language learning goals. Once you form the habit, you won't even have to think about starting each time. It'll just be natural. Have something that you must take responsibility for. 
you'll be more motivated to continue if there are others, especially classmates or a teacher, watching you progress. Look for resources inside your community, and if there are no opportunities there, look for things digitally. You can find many of our videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course, our entire video and audio lesson library on our website. The lessons on our website also come with assignment courses, so you can test your knowledge. The last tip is to make your goal public. Share your goal. Tell people about your goal. For example, if you want to give a business presentation in your target language this year, then tell your colleagues or your boss about it. Some people may find what you're doing interesting, and they can support you. This kind of pressure can help push people forward who have trouble motivating themselves alone. By telling others about your goal, you feel more accountable. Because you told somebody that you were planning on doing something, there's an underlying sense of guilt if you don't accomplish the task. You may feel that you have failed your peers in some way, even if there's no direct pressure from them. Using this technique, you can push yourself into moving forward toward your goal, especially at times when you feel the least motivated. And that brings us to the end of our five tips to stop wasting time and start learning a language. We've talked a lot about how to set goals for yourself and think about new challenges. First, I told you about creating SMART goals. Remember, SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Registering for a test is a great example of a SMART goal. Next, we talked about keeping a diary or social media account in your target language. Start doing it right now, even if you're still a beginner. Then, I suggested that you focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Pick something in your target language that you really love, because you may need to watch it over and over again until it all makes sense to you. And next, we talked about enrolling in a regular language course. This will give you something concrete that you must take responsibility for. Finally, make your goal public. Tell someone about your learning goals to keep you accountable for them. You're much less likely to abandon your studies if you have friends asking you about your progress. I hope that these are useful tips that you can use to reach your language learning goals. And before we go, let me remind you to download tons of free PDF lessons to learn the language the fast, fun, and easy way. Just click the link in the description. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may find it useful. Do you have any good tips that you've used to help you reach your goals? Share them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Want to speak real Norwegian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at NorwegianClass101.com. Want to finally learn Norwegian the fast, fun, and easy way? In this video, I'll show you the top 10 ways to get started. So let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. Access any audio or video lesson on NorwegianClass101.com and just press the play button to get started. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. We have thousands of audio and video lessons covering a variety of topics like grammar, pronunciation, listening, and reading. Just click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, read along with the lesson. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript. These come with every lesson. The lesson notes provide you with the dialogue for the scene taught in the lesson, along with translations, a more in-depth explanation of the grammar and culture, and even vocab and sample sentences. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear in the lesson. And the dialogue study tool provides you with the audio for the lesson dialogue, along with the translations. Number three, shadowing. Shadowing is a tested learning technique where you repeat what you hear. This is a great way to start speaking in minutes and practice speaking in general. If you're listening along with the lesson audio or dialogue, be sure to shadow along the way. Number four, use the dialogue study tool to master the conversation. Here, you get the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation demonstrated in the lesson. Listen and repeat until you've mastered each line. Do this until you've mastered the entire conversation. Number five, Use the voice recorder to perfect your pronunciation and speaking. In the dialogue study tool, you'll find a microphone icon next to each line. Click on it to record your voice. Then, compare it with the native speakers. Listen and adjust your pronunciation until you match that of the native speaker. Number six, review vocab with the lesson vocabulary list. 
Vocabulary words are the building blocks of language. You can save vocab words taught in each lesson by clicking on Add to Word Bank. Want to drill the words with smart flashcards instead? Just click on Add to Flashcard Deck to do so. Number seven, listen to the review track. If you've studied an audio lesson before, just listen to the review track so that you don't have to listen through the entire lesson again. This is a great way to reinforce the material that you've learned and it's great to have on the go. Just access any audio lesson and click on the download icon. Then click review to download the review track. Number eight, review with quizzes after the lesson. Once you're confident enough with the material taught in the lesson, be sure to take the quiz to test your newfound knowledge. Take the review questions and answer true or false for each one. Or take the writing questions and input your answer. Remember to check the answers by clicking on the check answers button. Number nine, participate and leave a comment. The best way to master what you've learned is to use it. Join the community of learners by leaving a comment below at the end of every lesson. Our dedicated teachers will check your responses to correct you on any mistakes or provide you with helpful study tips and advice. And finally, number 10, move on to the next lesson. Done with a lesson? Mark the lesson as complete. You can see your overall learning progress on your dashboard. If you particularly enjoyed the lesson, mark the lesson as favorite so that you can come back to it later at any time. Click on the forward arrow to move on to the next lesson and continue learning. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn Norwegian, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. Remember, you can sign up to NorwegianClass101.com by clicking on the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds, and it's free. I'll see you next time. Bye. How are your Norwegian listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? En gutt läser från dagboken sin. Vad var den första tingen gutten gjorde i dag? Väre var bra i dag. Jag svämte i svemmahallen om eftermiddagen och jag gick på kino om kvällen. Jag studerade hela morgonen också. I dag var inte så värst. Vad var den första tingen gutten gjorde i dag? En gutt läser från dagboken sin. Vad var den första tingen gutten gjorde i dag? Väre var bra i dag. Jag svämte i svemmahallen om eftermiddagen och jag gick på kino om kvällen. Jag studerade hela morgonen också. I dag var inte så värst. En man rapporterar salgsresultaten till bedriften hans på ett möte. Vilka två diagrammer brukar han i presentationen? Vänlig se på utskriften. Diagrammet till vänster visar sällskapets omsättning de sista tre åren och salgsprognosen hittar i år. Diagrammet till höger visar omsättningen månad för månad fram till oktober i år. Se på diagrammet till vänster. Det visar att omsättningen har ökat stadigt de sista tre åren. Visst vi klarar att fortsätta öka omsättningen vår så ska totalomsättningen till i år visa en ökning jämfört med i fjor. Se därefter på diagrammet till höger. Detta diagram visar att kampanjen vi hade i april och august var ganska effektiv. Känner. Men omsättningen vår gick ned i maj och september efter kampanjen. Ja, men denna typen av rekyl är ungårlig. Jag förväntar att omsättningen till i år ska visa en ökning i förhållande till i fjor, visst vi klarar att fortsätta att öka omsättningen vår varje månad. Vilka två diagrammer brukar han i presentationen? En man rapporterar salgsresultaten till bedriften hans på ett möte. Vilka två diagrammer brukar han i presentationen? Vänlig se på utskriften. Diagrammet till vänster visar sällskapets omsättning de sista tre åren och salgsprognosen hittar i år. Diagrammet till höger visar omsättningen månad för månad fram till oktober i år. Se på diagrammet till vänster. Det visar att omsättningen har ökat stadigt de sista tre åren. 
Hvis vi klarer å fortsette å øke omsetningen vår, så skal totalomsetningen til i år vise en økning sammenlignet med i fjor. Se deretter på diagrammet til høyre. Dette diagrammet viser at kampanjen vi hadde i april og august var ganske effektive. Skjønner. Men omsetningen vår gikk ned i mai og september etter kampanjene. Ja, men denne typen rekyr er unngålig. Jeg forventer at omsetningen til i år skal vise en økning i forhold til i fjor, hvis vi klarer å fortsette å øke omsetningen vår hver måned. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Want to speak real Norwegian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at NorwegianClass101.com. You are at a train station where you're attempting to buy an express ticket from a ticket machine. Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? The option on the bottom left is for an express train. Hurtigtog. You are at a train station where you've just bought an express ticket. Which train car row and seat number are you in? Which train car row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in train car number one in the eighth row in seat C. You are at a train station where you're reading the train schedule for an express ticket that you've just bought. On which days are there no express trains running? On which days are there no express trains running? There are no express trains running on public holidays and the third Sunday of every month. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, Passing train. Passerende tog. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank?
Which exit should you take to get to the taxi rank? You should take the east exit in order to get to the taxi rank. Utgang mot øst. You just got a text message from your hotel's pickup service. What does the first number refer to? What does the first number refer to? The number in the text message refers to the customer code. Kunde nummer. You're checking out the hotel's facilities when you see a notice on a door. What does the notice mean? What does the notice mean? The notice reads, do not enter. Ingen adgang. You search online for the nearest bus service. What bus service does the page show? What bus service does the page show? The web page shows a free bus service. Gratis bus. You're about to enter a small shop, but there's a handwritten note on the door. What does the message on the note mean? What does the message on the note mean? The note reads, I'll be right back. Jag kommer strax tillbaka. There's a national holiday coming up, and you notice that shops have special notices about having different opening hours. From when will the opening hours return to normal?
From when will the opening hours return to normal? The notice says that the opening hours will be back to normal on January 7th. 7th January. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.